Hello. <laughs> Is this thing on? Um, wow. Okay. Hey, it's Karen Bryant from me, and I'm uh, <laughs> I'm testing out my live uh, broadcast capabilities, and I'm cracking up just looking at some text here. Okay. So, uh, so if you're there, definitely let me know and maybe write a comment. And like I said, this is the first time, so we're so we're gonna figure <laughs> we're gonna uh, test this out and see how it works. So if you're there, give us a give us a give us a message and uh, and let us know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be sitting here talking to myself, which is not that unusual, to be totally honest with you. Okay, let me. And I know. Oh, we were gonna tweet this too, so that we could <laughs> we could uh, um, let everybody know. And I, I know this is exciting okay. that I am text. There's ten people. Welcome. It's my first live broadcast, and right now Wade is gonna work some. You're gonna work something out, right? So I can uh, send a text. A tweet. I'm gonna put this on Facebook right now and let everybody know. So if you're here, like I was just saying, um, write a comment, and I guess that means I will be able to see it. If you write a comment, I'm looking. I don't see any comments right now, and forgive me. It's my first time. Keep live one. Okay. So I don't see any comments coming in. Does that mean nobody's writing, or do I just not have it on my? Okay. If you guys are there, write me a comment, something nice, nothing rude, and um, <laughs> maybe maybe I can see it, and then that way I'll be able to read it and uh, respond to you. If you have a question, like I said, that's not completely lewd or out of control, because I'm going to find a way to reach through the computer and smack people that are not nice to me. Let's see. I don't want it too loud. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I don't see any comments yet. Uh, tweet the, tweet okay, the, okay, what is it, KB Live 1? Just let people know you're here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, I'm like, I'm just like fields of dreams. If you build it, they will come. So I'll, here we go. I'll tweet, uh, tweet that we're here and that we're live. And um, like I said, I would much rather talk to you guys than to myself. This is what it sounds like inside my head all day, every day. So I would <laughs> much rather hear from you guys. So I'm going to figure this out and see if, uh, maybe I'll hit, ref you, you think I should hit refresh? I want to see if this will work. I, I find it hard to believe nobody's writing a comment. I'm going to hit refresh and see what happens. Yeah, I don't see any comment. Oh, there they are on the side. Just figured it out. It's running smoothly. Thank you, Roberts2210. We've been writing comments. Check your PC. Duh. Thank you, number. Okay, you're right. Give me, give me a digital high five. Booyah! Right there, got blue. Much love from Vancouver. Vancouver. I've not been there yet. I've been in Mar uh, uh, Montreal, Toronto. Be going to Calgary this summer. I have a friend who has worked in my Vancouver. Said it's gorgeous. I would love to visit. It's a beautiful. It looks like a beautiful, beautiful place. Serbia. Right on. You know, I had a roommate, well, not my roommate, guy who lived across the hall from me in college was um, uh, from, the, uh, he's Yugoslavian, and I remember he used to say, Nemoim nekad kaza da tebuli, something like that. He had it on his ceiling, and it meant basically, don't let them see that you're upset, don't let them see that you're weak, something like that, so that you can always stay strong and that you'll win. It was something interesting, but I swear to you, I will always remember what Devor Javoye had written on his ceiling. <laughs> Freshman year at Brown University. Um, thank you guys. I'm I I really appreciate the uh, the kind sentiments. You guys are awesome. <laughs> no rampage will never touch me live. Uh, what is your name? Let me see this. Here's the thing. The rampage stuff is all a gag, and uh, we actually talk about a lot of that stuff beforehand, and just <laughs> it's for laughs. He never. If you notice in the thing, okay, in the last one, he put his leg on my leg, but he, he doesn't lick me, he doesn't kiss me, he doesn't actually really touch me in any untoward way. It's all just for a laugh. Although, he actually does give a lot of very good information in the last interview. I mean, he talks for so long that somewhere there's going to be a nugget of gold. And he actually did 
did speak very candidly, I thought. So that was really a lot of fun. But honestly, yeah, baby, it's working. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, yeah but seriously, you guys, anybody, I mean, I understand how some people, and Wade's right here. If you, if you, <laughs> if you seriously think that, like, Wade's being disrespected and Wade's getting harsh on, he's totally in on it. I, how could he not be? Like, and the other thing that cracks me up about that is, like, Wade should have gone in there and, like, told Rampage what's up and kicked his ass. Like, have you guys actually seen that guy punch? Because we have in person. <laughs> and I would never in a million years wish anybody to stand in front of that man and get punched. Um, and it's all just for a goof. He shows total respect <laughs> off camera. He's, he's so cool off camera and totally respectful. And and literally, like, he'll say things like, I don't want to do this or that because I like Wade too much and I don't want to mess with him. I don't want to do this. It's it's all cool, man. It's all just a goof. It's really fun. Um, those of you who get it, thank you for getting it. Those of you who get upset, whatever, I still thank you for the views. But seriously, it's it's all just for fun with Rampage, man. It's the guy is the best, and I know that he uh, is a little bit polarizing sometimes. But he really is funny. He's a funny, funny guy and a good guy, and he actually, truly, at heart really just wants to entertain his fans. And that's why we do some of the goofy stuff that we do together. Because it's it's just for a laugh. Because some fighters are boring. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but he's not. Okay, so let's see. Let's keep let's keep going. Okay, so I've done some shout outs to some people. What time is it for you? It is twelve twenty after midnight. Twelve twenty after midnight my midnight. Um I'm actually a person who kinda of stays up late generally. So, it's not a big deal. All right, I did say I was going to tweet this, so I want to um, I want to do that. So, okay, okay. Uh, I'm not a very good uh, typist. I'm sorry. You want to do? <laughs> if you guys haven't figured out how MV Heat works, it's that Wade is the technical genius. I'm the uh, the verbal. I'm not going to say genius because that's just conceited. But. Uh, so I was just going to say, I'm on live. I'm on my YouTube channel live right now. Join me and talk. Yeah. So the way it works is that he does all this sort of techie computer stuff. And uh, and I do all the yapping. But I actually know a lot more about computers than a lot of people do. Because <laughs> we've been married for 10 years. So let's see. Anybody have any? Oh, are those, are those new... Okay. Oh, there are new more. Looks fine. So does the stream. Marry me. I'm married. Like I said, 10 years. Uh, duh, KB, everybody's busted. I mean, Karen, do you like Brazil? Let's see. I've not been there yet. I hope to go. I can tell you that the Brazilian people that I have met, I like very much. That's part of the reason I took an interest in learning their language, because I wanted to be able to speak with them more and to give you guys better interviews and help put the fighters at ease and let them know that somebody cared enough about them to try to make them feel comfortable and not just assume that they would learn English. Uh, so I, I love Brazilian food. I enjoy the music. So I'm sure I will be going there soon. Hopefully, you know, for for the UFC show in June, and um, and I, I plan to. I know I would love it. Oh, I, I like I said, the Brazilian people I know I like very much. So, um, <laughs> thank you guys for the for the for the comments, Karen. Will your husband ever start an MMA career, Mr. Cranky Twenty? Good question. Part of the reason I even got, we even started MMA Heat was when Wade used to do Taekwondo years and years ago. He used to teach it and everything like that. And I used to do Taekwondo too at one point, but he got a lot further along than I did. Cut to, we're dating. He's always saying, I want to get back into fighting. I wish I could train. I got to do this, yada, yada, yada. So for our wedding gift, um, not everybody does this, but I, we did for our wedding, on our wedding, we gave each other a present. And I gave him a membership to a full contact gym. Because I wanted him to get back into it, and also I figured if he's going to be married to me, he's going to have to learn how to fight. Because one day my mouth was probably going to get me in trouble. So he started training at this gym, full contact gym, uh, four times a week, bro. We'll get to that. That's another story. Um, but anyway, started training and got right back into it, really loved it, and then started doing all the disciplines. So some of our, yeah, Jeet Kune Do, the whole Bruce Lee thing. That was part of the reason I, I found the, uh, I, I signed him up for that membership because it was founded on Jeet Kune Do. But, uh, but some of our best friends are friends that he's trained with over the years. And um, so he's one of those guys that figures if he had only been a few years younger, what, four years younger, five years younger? Yes, 10 years younger, let's be honest. Um, 
<laughs> Younger the better. <laughs> then he could have uh, made a made a go of it. He really enjoys it for sure. He did a smoker one time, kind of kind of more of like a Muay Thai. Smoke. You couldn't do elbows. I mean, whatever. Anyway, he did a smoker. Um, learned, I need to do more learned, learned he needed to do more cardio. More boxing. Learned about the yeah boxing and learned about the adrenaline dump that a lot of you far, first time fighters definitely know. I'm sure. Um, he was sort of exhausted and defeated in certain ways before he even got in there. But all I just kept doing was screaming for him to kick more because he actually has very good kicks. But uh, but so, no, I don't think he'll be having an MMA career, although I think there's a few journalists or quote-unquote journalists that he would beat up, right? Is that right? I'm sorry. I was I think nothing. <laughs> I'm just busted. Um, Karen, can you give a shout-out to us Assyrians from Australia fans? Yes, well, hello, Assyrians from Australia. I have not been to Australia yet closest I've come is Singapore. I wanted to make the jump. Although I will say this, Fortune Gym, where we train a lot and where we shoot our show, where we shot the Rampage interview the other day, Fortune Gym is owned by Justin Fortune, who is Australian, who was a heavyweight contender at one point, who fought Lennox Lewis for the title. He was unfortunately unsuccessful, but he also used to train uh, and, and teach alongside Freddie Roach. He used to train Mike Tyson. All kinds of stuff. So it's actually pretty cool. So there's actually a little bit of an Australia connection for us um, at MMA Heat. And I'm just bummed that we didn't get to go to the last show because that was really good. That camp my bike was sweet. Um, oh, you're e-motorboating me. Again, and again, the whole thing with the motorboating. If you guys, please, go back and look at that video. He never touches me. It's... Uh, then we would have had a problem. Yeah, if he talked... And I will talk about that. I don't need to get into the conversations we've had after that event, but I swear to you, everybody's like, oh, he motor He never touched me. It's a goof. And like some smart people have figured out, you know, if Wade is doing the uploading and the editing of these clips, if he wasn't comfortable with stuff seeing the light of day, it wouldn't see the light of day. So obviously, we know it's a goof, and it's, and it's, and it's a joke. And again, you know, Think about this. Where would we be without those classic rampage moments? I mean, really, haven't, haven't we? Haven't we all shared a couple of laughs over those? Isn't the, isn't it more fun having rampage in the picture like that? Love that guy. Guy is hilarious. What's on your iPod right now? Some signed <laughs> signed your sometime analyst Morocco. Well, here's the thing, Stephen. Well, Wade's got it right now. I don't know if I was telling you this, Stephen. I'm addicted to chick, uh, uh, Chickapedia now. Is that what it's called? Chick chi yeah. <laughs> no, Chickapedia is so the one that ranks the hot oh, chicks. Chickapedia is yeah. the hot chicks. That's what I'm chick addicted to. Yeah, Chickapedia. <laughs> Hi, that was a Freudian slip. <laughs> one day I want to be on Chickapedia. No, um, uh, Chictionary, which is... Um, wow, that was a really random... That was, that was funny. Um Chictionary, you know I'm a word nerd, and uh, so it's this game where you get seven letters and you have to arrange it and make um, words out of the letters that they give you, and there's a certain amount of words that you can get, and if you get the 7.1, then it's like, sweet. See, here it is. I don't know, here, I'm, I'm giving a nice ad for Chictionary right now, not to be confused with Chickpedia. <laughs> um, but anyway, you play the game. And it's uh, this is what I'm this is what I'm addicted to, but I'm not going to start a game right now because I'm talking to you guys. And anyway, Chictionary is fun. What are you doing, Stephen? That's what I need to know. Okay, so right now we got 81 people. Thank you. I don't know who's up late or who's up early. Let's see what other kind of comments have come in. Do do I like cocaine? I wouldn't know. Haven't done it. I just talk fast. See, that's the thing. Probably in my life, people have assumed I'm like a big old into all kinds of stuff. Uh, I'm actually just really kind of excited to be talking to you guys, so I, I don't know about cocaine. Good, good Eric Clapton song, though, by the way. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Do we have anything else coming in? Sweden? Oh, yeah, let's see. Um, let's see, okay. Oh, Richard from New Jersey. What, what, shout out. What exit, brah? <laughs> I used to live in New York. That was always the joke. I'm from New Jersey, and everybody go, what exit? Um, for those who don't know, Jersey Turnpike, it's a whole, it's a whole bit. Um, Romania, wow, Romania. Um, yeah, Sudbury, Ontario. Um, regards from Kuwait, wow, that's cool. You know, I actually was going to uh, be near Kuwait. I was scheduled to be. I was going to go on a trip to Abu Dhabi uh, and Dubai with my mom, but we had to reschedule. But we were going to be there next month. Why did we have to reschedule? Because we're going to Sweden. 
and because we're going to Atlanta. So we're going to have a lot of great MMA heat coverage for you guys. Uh, the Sweden trip is going to be killer. And it turns out, if anybody's watching from Sweden, you guys know this, we've got a lot of Swedish friends. Our friend Lars Valin is who Blade trains his jits with. He's a Swedish guy. He used to be Hoist Gracie's training partner, all this stuff, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, we have a pretty good connection in Sweden, and we are psyched to go, so we're going to bring you all kinds of MMA heat coverage. Maybe also something a little extra that I can't quite tell you guys about right now, but it's going to be good. It's going to be big, and, uh, and, and it's going to be great. And so then after that, following week, we're going to also be in Atlanta for John and Rashad. That fight's going to be crazy. So, so we have that. And also, next weekend, if you guys, anybody's near El Paso, Texas, I'm actually working on the Worldwide MMA show. It's their debut show. Um, it's down in El Paso, Texas. It's going to be on the army base, marine base. I should probably remember which one it is, but, um, it's a, a fight for the troops. What they do is some of the proceeds from the night are going to go to the wounded warrior, um, group and, and help out some of the soldiers, but also it's going to be entertaining. Sean McCorkle is the main event. It's also got Carol Parisian on it, trying to make his comeback against Thomas Denny. It's going to be really fun. So I'm working on the broadcast team on that. It's me and Ron Kruk and, and, uh, Don Fry who I met for the first time the other day, who is a piece of work. Uh, so that's kind of fun. So, see, funny you should say that racker about broadcasting during the tough live show. That's actually an idea that we have, and that's something that we're going to try to work out. And if my friend Stephen is still watching, the plan is to have Stephen have you come over and uh, and sit with me. Because here's the thing: some of you guys may have seen if you if you if you subscribe to me on Facebook a couple weeks ago, I posted. Uh, this is scary. This is going to become my confessional. <laughs> I'm going to be doing this every single day, and they'll be like, "Holy, holy crap!" Karen's you back. You're just sitting in a closet. Yeah, I'm just sitting in the closet. I. Um, this is going to be very fun. But I'm a huge <laughs> mystery science theater fan. So if you haven't seen that show, the concept of the show is that there's these. It's long convoluted, but the essence of the show is that these people are watching really bad movies and just being snarky and commenting on the movies. So I was planning to have my friend Stephen Morocco from MMA Junkie, with whom I do many of my wrap-ups, uh, come to my house and watch The Ultimate Fighter. Now, I doubt we'll be snarky because we are fans of the show, but we I plan to have a running commentary. You know, we're both big fight fans, but, you know, we love pop culture and we love a good a good day when it's, when, when it's appropriate. So that... That's the plan. What was that? No, we just did work out that 10 second delay. Right. There will be a little bit of a delay because of this. So what we'll maybe do is start the broadcast and then during a commercial break for those DVR people or whatever, we can make some kind of point for you to catch up. That's the thing. There's a few logistics that we've got to work out, but that is certainly the plan. MST3K, right on. 091 Hero understands what I'm talking about. How often do I do live feeds? This is the very first one. And like I was just joking... It may become hourly. <laughs> it, may, it may become a running nonstop dialogue because I am a chatty girl. Um, ooh, who do I have winning in the Anderson Chael rematch? Personally, I think Silva will easily win in Chael's just talking and fought Anderson hurt the first time around. MMA's biggest fan, 23. Here's the thing. I've stated before, I, I do believe Anderson would win again. I do believe Chael fought him very, very well the first time. Obviously inflicted a lot of damage. You know, the, the tricky thing is, <laughs> you see a weird hand coming. <laughs> um, the tricky thing is, you know, we never really know how hurt Anderson was or whatever. I, I would rather believe him and believe that, that the rib is broken. But regardless, you know, you lose in the fifth round, you lose in the first round, you, you, you lost. You got caught in the triangle, you, you tapped out, you lost. So I think if Anderson is 100% healthy, if the fight is in Brazil, I just, I just think he's one of the greatest ever. I, don't, I find it hard to believe he could be beaten in those circumstances. And also I, I, I think Chael is very good, but I thought against Bisping he didn't look as good as somebody who could be Anderson should look. Let's just put it that way. That was a good fight, though, him and Bisping. That was a good fight. We want to see your husband. Right now, honestly, he was training a little. Did you take a shower? No, I threw no. a hat on. <laughs> he, he, he came home from the gym with Lars, and he's just got like a beat-up old Hanes T-shirt. Hey, everybody. And his CU. Went to CU. Go Buffs. Oh, my God. You had to do it. 
go buffs. He's drinking an arrogant bastard ale, uh, which we might need to refill on. Or, no, I guess I, I shouldn't drink here. That would be inappropriate. But uh, what's my favorite thing from McDonald's? I don't know, leaving? I don't, <laughs> I don't eat there. That's, that's not good for you, man. That's not good. Batman or Superman? Jimin or full? My text on this is pretty small. I should maybe see if I can. Okay, yo, there you are. Jim, ooh, that's a tough question. Batman. You go Superman. I gotta go Batman, I was gonna say. Superman can fly. I know, see, Superman can fly, and I and I he like can that. See through shit. And I kind of like got that. No, but listen, shh. I kind of like that that Superman is sort of nerdy. And uh, we know that I'm a word person, so the idea that he works in a newspaper and stuff, I kind of like. Batman's just a rich dude with a bunch of toys. Yeah, but rich dudes with a lot of toys can be fun for a girl. That's not so bad. I mean, you make that sound so terrible. If Superman crossed the line, he could be rich. Listen. Superman's heart is in the right place, as is Batman's. I mean, if we're just putting it, if we're if we're if we're strictly going on movies, even even George Clooney's was terrible, but George Clooney is sexier than Christopher Reeve. Even, I mean, yeah, I know, that's a bad that's a bad tangent movies to go off Batman. on. I think I like Batman more though. I remember when I was in college, this guy I knew turned me on to the whole Batman: The Dark Knight series. I'd never heard of that before. And uh, he, was a, he was a football player and, and um, turned me on to these, these comics, and they were so cool. And so cut two years later when all these other movies were made, um, I actually understood that the backstories, you know, the reinvention of the, the Dark Knight and all that stuff. That's cool stuff. Batman, eh, Superman is good. I'm not mad at either one. Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine. There you go, Wolverine. Wolverine's the man. Wolverine is the man. What's the best video you've ever put together that you were most happy with? Pegs and MMA. I like the Nick Diaz. I was just going to say the Nick Diaz stuff. It's funny because the stuff with Nick and Rhonda training was was really this great bonus. Our buddy Lazy the Savage, you know, who works with Middle Easy and stuff, had said, hey, you know, I'm going to be going over there with Nick and these guys, and I would love it if you guys can film them, you know, rolling with me and tapping me out. So we went over to help Lazy out, but you know, I've known Nick for years. I, you know, I used to work for Showtime Boxing, but even when I did the CBS Saturday Night Fights and I covered a lot of Elite XC and all the stuff, even Pro Elite and all this, so I've actually known Nick a long time and, uh, you know, have covered many of his fights and while we were not, you know, buddies or whatever, he certainly knows that I am, you know, a fan of his and that I'm legit and that I'm not a, um, uh, sycophant or whatever. I've been around him a long time. So we've definitely built up some trust. And so when we went to go film that with Nick and Rhonda and Nate and Manny Gamborian and uh, I mean, it was really, really fun. It came out great. And what was so, what was, I don't know if it's my all time favorite, but what I really like about it is that Nick was just in a great mood and, and we were able to just sort of sidle up to him and get this great interview out of him because it was just fun and we were all just having fun, hanging out and and I don't know that 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 was that's more one of the more fun things in recent memories. But again, like I said, I always have fun with Rampage. Um, I always have fun like the Josh Barnett video. I actually really like a lot. Oh, fixing the nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a because line. well, when we did this, we did this whole interview with Josh, which I love because Josh is a very smart guy, and uh, we start talking about music and all, all kinds of random stuff. What's and up, Crooklyn? Literally, literally, is that Crooklyn up there? Said, hey, Karen. Hey, what's up, girl? Um, and so we're literally filming with Josh and then his training partner comes running in because there's kind of a weightlifting gym next door and he's like Josh this dude just busted his nose doing a snatch you gotta help and we're like what and so we all just like took off running and um, if you guys have never seen it you should look for the video that's called Josh Barnett fixes a nose with two pens and bad puns and so he starts making all these jokes about you know snatches which are a weightlifting term but Josh, being a very funny, clever man, makes a bunch of other jokes. But he literally sets this guy's nose with two, with two big pens. And I'm kind of freaking out. And the guy's kind of freaking out. And it's it's very funny. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely look for it. It's, it's very entertaining. So that was one of those great, unexpected videos that we got um, that turned out to be a lot of fun. There's, I'm trying to think what, 
we've got a lot of good, you know, listen, there's over 700 videos on our, in our library. So I probably can't even, most recent. yeah, that's just cause it's, it's recent. I can't even remember, but I know, Watching oh, Christoph you know, and Mark no, you, you, yeah, Christoph and Mark training, but one of my favorite things is the, the goof video we did with Jacare, where he and I do a, um, uh, uh, Rock'em Sock'em robot fight because we set it all up like there's a fight and we were in our friend uh, Gilberto Faria's store, the, the Jiu Jitsu Pro Gear guy, and we're down with him and he he's Jacare's manager. So we, we start this whole thing in his store and it's just so stupid and funny. I come out imitating Diego Sanchez. Jacare has got, you know, like negative percent body fat and he's all losers right before a fight. And we do this Rock'em Sock'em thing and it's just totally stupid and ridiculous. And that's definitely one of my favorites because we just have a heck of a lot of fun. So let's see. Um, <laughs> get naked fast. We love The Simpsons. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, what was your question about? Like do we like The Simpsons or something in it or South Park, right? Yeah, no, I still. Okay. Okay. So I do like, I'm still upset about losing a costume. I'm saying that you're taking the fight of the judge. Oh, Pierce losing a cause check. That was a close fight. I don't know if that's the fight I'd be the most mad about in my life, but why does you know why does GSP sound like a robot? Paul R R. I I don't agree that he does. I think I think George A. It's a different language, so he may be a little bit more measured in his speaking, just like kind of how I probably sound like a school teacher when I try to speak Portuguese because I still have to think about it. I'm not totally. I mean, George is more fluent in English than I am in Portuguese, but. I think part of it maybe is that. I think he also thinks about what he's saying. So I don't think he just blabs off the cuff, unlike some people. Uh, so I think maybe that's why you think he sort of sounds like a robot. But I, I you know, the more I'm around him, the more I like him. I think he is a, a very true martial artist. I think, I think his heart is in the right place. I think he's incredibly talented. I, I, I like GSP a lot. I know he gets some grief from people, but I think he's... I think he's actually really great. Um, ooh, let's see. Okay, we got 104 watching. That's awesome. Drink, drink, bitch. Rav Baller. Rav Baller wants me to have a cocktail, but I don't know if I'm going to do that right now. So, let's see. Okay. Okay. Chrome Rain is asking me, what got me interested in UFC or MMA in general regards from Australia? Okay, another Australian friend. So, here's the thing. I grew up watching boxing with my, my dad. My family likes sports a lot. I played... A lot of sports growing up, uh, but I remember growing up watching boxing with my dad, and we would sit around and watch it together, and so that's probably where the love was instilled. And um, cut to later on in my life, after college, I started training. Uh, I did a little, you know, uh, a taekwondo and stuff, and um, I actually met Wade, my husband, in a kickboxing class, and. You know, I don't know, it just, um, when I started working for Showtime Championship Boxing, I did three and a half years with them, and so being around the sport even more, just being completely immersed in it for three and a half years was fantastic. That, of course, then crossed over into MMA because I started doing the CBS things, but also just being around fighters, being around the gym, Wade was training. It just, you know, you couldn't, for me anyway, I couldn't help but love it. I'm, like I said, I'm a big sports fan, so the athleticism of the guys and what they're doing, I just, you know, did you put it on Facebook too? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, uh, I just loved it. I love the competition. I love the spirit of it. I love the one-on-one -on -one element. I love the primal, primal element of it. Um, you know, I trained boxing over at PKG with my buddy Chad George, who just won the other night. He used to be in the WEC, and he's trying to fight his way back in. He's, he's, he's looking really good. But um, I just, uh, I'm a competitive girl, and I really like how it's so pure. I guess would be my best answer. Anderson is a fraud. I don't agree, Rav. We were just having a nice conversation about something else, but I don't Phil Brony's on Twitter asking what you're wearing right now. Phil Brony? <laughs> Seeing your live one. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Phil, I think I'm wearing too much for you, baby. Um, oh, man, I remember meeting Phil when, when we were doing the CBS shows. Oh, I love that guy. The New York Badass is so fantastic. Really, really, really like that guy a lot. <laughs> oh, man. Um, ooh, good question. Who should Machida fight next? Wow. Well, wow. Machida, I don't, you know, it's interesting. The whole 205ers and the, and the 185ers are starting to get really interesting. Who should Machida fight next? I can't decide on that one. I don't know. Um, 
That's a tough question. I don't know. Phil Davis, I think a lot of people were talking about that. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's something everybody needs to see or not. I don't know. I don't know. But I'd like to see him in action again. I like I like Machida. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, I think I missed a few down here. Let me see. Where does she read from? What do you mean, humors? Read what? The the messages, the comments are coming up on the side of the screen. Um, they're, they're not in order. Though. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I don't know. Well, no, I think they are. They're kind of jumbled, I think. If that's what you mean, I'm reading from the side of the screen. It was 20 seconds ago, 7 seconds ago. 20, 20. I don't know. Yeah, they may not be. This this is a test, folks. Like I said, this is the first time we're doing this. Am I Chinese or Japanese, the McDeal? I am neither. If you remember from one of my videos, I've, I've actually got a little bit of... My dad was half white and half black. My mom is Jamaican. Um, Jamaicans have a lot of different cultures. My background goes to Scottish from the Jamaican side. I don't know if there's any Asian in my family, but you never know. I love the Asian food. That is for sure. Best pound for pound fighter right now. German Nopit Dogs. Never heard of them. I think Anderson is fantastic. I think... Aldo is fantastic. You know, John is obviously very, very good. But I feel like John hasn't been tested enough. I mean, you know, people like to argue Anderson hasn't fought guys that are hard enough. And blah, 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 blah. The fact is Anderson has just schooled so many people. I, I mean, I think it made people make that comment because he's so good he makes it look easy. Um, I mean, jeez. Those those guys come to mind. Um, I mean, I I probably would say Anderson. I mean, geez, Dominic is very good. I mean, you know, out of the chat. I mean, see, and GSP is very good. But I feel, and I feel like you know, he's definitely dominated his people. But I guess because of the way Anderson finishes people, that gives him that extra little asterisk that where he seems even more badass. Um, I, I mean, I think he's, you know, I think he's, I think he's the greatest. I'm just going to have to go with Anderson, final answer. <laughs> um, what do, I want to know what you like more, Japanese MMA, soccer kicks, or USA based? My goodness, when Shogun used to be able to do those soccer kicks, oh my lord. That was brutal. The thing is, is that was so exciting, but really scary to me, really scary. Um, I'm actually okay with head kicks not being in the game anymore because it's it's just so brutal. I mean, I love this sport and I'm I'm I am comfortable around it, but that doesn't mean every now and then I don't still wince. I mean, when I watched, you know, I was third row, fourth row, whatever for for Shogun and Hendo, and I, I was totally bugging out. That fight was very difficult for me because I don't like to see those guys. I don't like to see people when they really look like they're getting hurt and the soccer kick thing to me is so brutal that um, obviously it's a very decisive move and, and is a great way to finish, but it just kind of freaks me out. It just seem, it's just kind of freaks me out. I, I don't want to see anybody I know or care about get soccer kicked, let's put it that way. Um, what do you think? <laughs> uh, I saw you used to interview for the NFL, big fella Marcus. Here's the thing, I wish. I've been to two Super Bowls. Three? Two. two. Two Super Bowls. I've been to two Super Bowls. And I did do, at the second Super Bowl I went to, which was Green Bay Packers versus the Denver Broncos, and the Broncos won, and, and uh, it was actually pretty fantastic. That was down in San Diego. But I did the, um, before the game, I got to go to the Packers, you know, media day and interview a bunch of the Packers, and it was great. Cause I talked to Favre, and Freeman, and talked to, you know, all, a lot of the guys. It was really fun. Um, again, that's another clip you can find on, on my YouTube channel. But I've never actually, you know, covered NFL games or worked for the NFL. If anybody from the NFL is listening, <laughs> I'm a huge football fan and would love that on the side. Um, being a little uh, a, a NFL reporter, I think would be fantastic. I'm a, I'm a New England Patriots fan. I'm from New England. Hate all you want. Hate on Brady. Whatever, whatever. He's good. He's very good. Um, so I've been a Pats fan all my life. Here's the problem. Wade is from Denver, and so I always like to call his dad up and harass him when the Broncos are playing because he had Tebow. I mean, Manning. Just shush. So <laughs> the problem is, is that. 
I could pretty much always win that Razzing call. And now that Peyton is going to the Broncos, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm kind of bugging out because he's so good. He's so good. And uh, it's going to make it really hard to win that to win that phone call battle now. I'm bumming out. But good for Bronco fans. I mean, you know what? Good for you. You guys have come really close, and, and, and one more year you'll come really close and hey. until we squash your dreams. But, hey, Manny's going to sell some, some, some gear, some seats. The city's going to do well. I actually met Peyton and Eli, uh, it was a couple years ago, after the the Colts beat the Pats in, in the Super Bowl, and um, I was guest hosting the CBS morning show, and uh, I did it for a couple of days, and, and so they were saying, okay, the, the, the Manning brothers are coming in. Okay, so the one side of me, the sports fan of me, is like, oh, hell yeah, I mean, these guys are awesome, you know, I'm, I'm such a big football fan, but the other side of me is like, they just squashed your boys. And, uh, so I, thank you, some water, thank you, um, so I was really torn because I'm a huge fan, so, you know, of course I had to meet them, and I was like, Peyton, you know, my goodness, you are good, I kind of hate you, but I love, you know, I hated, I hated, I didn't hate the player, I hated the game in that situation, but I do love football, big football fan, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, what bra size am I? I'm not going to tell you, but, um, thanks for asking, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you were Bruce Lee in your past life. That's cool. That's cool. That must have been fun. Bruce is the man. It's not the new iPad. That's an old one. That is a Series 1. Yeah, keeping it real. Uh, trying, to, <laughs> trying to get some more. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> trying to know. <laughs> trying to... Uh, I would love to get the new one. I, I don't know. Maybe I will. Because this, this one is being taken over by... Uh, by Aurora, she's playing. Out. Well, I go to Bellator. X at three X. I'd like to go to Bellator. Here's the thing, because um, Bellator shows have been very good. <laughs> um, there's. <laughs> <laughs> we're just messing around. This is the rampage action figure. I can't say doll because of, where's this chain? Is it, I don't know. Oh, we, oh, it's probably it's. I think it's, it's a rampage. <laughs> Um, you know, the Bellator shows have been very good. Um, we actually have an interview with Vitor Viana uh, from a while back. I know he just lost the other day, got, got knocked out, but that was, you know, was his first loss. But um, no, the Bellator shows have been, have been money. But they've been in some places that we haven't been able to get to. Um, you know, the thing about what we do for MMA Heat, you know, we're, we're privately funded. We, you know, we don't have a big company behind us bankrolling us. So we do what we can with what we have. And Bellator shows, if they were a little closer, would definitely cover that. But um, but so far they haven't they haven't worked out in the budget. But honestly, that's no disrespect to Bellator and to the Bellator fighters, because I think you guys are doing really good work. And if you had some that were maybe a little closer to the West Coast, I would be there in a second. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Have I ever got into the fight in school? Have I ever gotten into a fight? No. I have never, what else are we doing? Oh, yes, we no, should. Totally about okay, this. yeah, I will do this. Let me do this in a second. No, I've never gotten in a fight. You know, it's funny. Um, I've gotten in some some ver verbal sparring wars, I guess. Not even, not really. I'm not, as much as I, I'm, I'm a little aggro and stuff, I'm not a, um, I'm not a fighter. I, I would definitely probably turn the other cheek, walk away. You can talk away. And laugh about it. Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. Nobody's ever been that mad at me. There's a couple of, <laughs> there's a couple of, people on here that are mad at me. This guy, poll tax fan, I'm watching you. He, this guy is such a clown. This is what he does. He writes some hateful stuff on my stuff. Like, you, whatever, I'm not even gonna say, just writes the most hateful stuff and then like turns his channel off, right? So you can't even go and block him. Cause I really, I only block people if you curse at me, if you say some racist stuff that's like completely obscene or you know, you're just talking a ridiculous amount of crap about Wade or whatever. Like. I'm totally okay with criticism. If it, you know, if it, it, that's fine. I want this to be a forum. But you start pulling some racist stuff or you start calling me, you know, whatever and cursing at me, see ya. So that's what this guy does. He jumps on and he writes this bunch of crap and then he turns his channel off. So it's hilarious. So I, I'm always, you know, I just remove his stuff when I see it. So sometimes he gets like a good four minutes where his mean comment is up. Um, but um, but it's, it's kind of hilarious to me. So if you know people who do that to me, Totally hilarious because I'm thinking, like, do they just sit around their computer? Oh, I got her now. 
Ooh, I said some mean words. Um, very funny to me. Anyway, let me let me do this. If you guys remember uh, Matt Hamill, obviously you should remember. It's not that long ago that he retired. So there was a movie about him um, called The Hammer. Initially it was called The Hamble, and then they changed it to The Hammer. So it's really terrific. We're going to be doing a giveaway on MMA Heat, um, most, mostly via Facebook, because it's going to have a little bit of an element where you guys need to Photoshop something and send it to us. But we've got a bunch of DVDs to give away. We've got signed posters. We've got some T-shirts like this one. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be really cool. We're gonna start that. We've been meaning to start it. We we just we got caught up in some stuff. So this is why it's kind of cool because this actually says Hamill the movie. So it's kind of collector's item because they had to, they they ended up changing the name. But if you haven't seen this movie, it's really really good. It's kind of like if you liked you know Rudy and The Blind Side, the you know the sports movies. And granted. You know, with Matt, if you're an MMA fan, you kind of know his story and you know how it's going to end. But it, the movie was just really, really well done. And it was actually filmed with hearing impaired and, and deaf, you know, actors, as well as hearing actors. Rich Franklin's got a role in it and stuff. And it's it's just, it's really, 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 really good. So we're going to be so giving some of those away. So yeah, so here, here's here's the deal. Here's the preview for the 115 of you watching. And tell your friends. You put it, you put it on my Facebook. On my Facebook. I had nine years. Oh, well, that's uh, what I'm talking about. I forgot about that. So. Put it on mine. How long, much longer are you going? I don't know. Probably a while. Um, <laughs> probably a while. Right. That's what I meant. Or you don't have to. We can do it another time. We'll do another. We'll do I'll a, share it. So we'll do another one. We can't do it tomorrow. We're going to a birthday party. Friend's birthday. But um, what what was I talking? Oh, so the hammer contest. What we're going to have you guys do, and we'll work out all the rules. So don't quote me on these and say, Karen, you quoted the official rules. But this does get hard. Right. I know. But basically. We will have official rules, but the basic idea is that we're going to want you guys to get creative with Photoshop or take a real picture with a hammer or whatever. It doesn't have to be Photoshop. But we want you to set up some funny scenarios in pictures with an actual hammer doing something ridiculous or in a strange, you know, situation. And then we'll post your pictures and the ones that get the one that the ones that, you know, get the most votes and we'll break down the prize, you know, requirements and whatever, whatever. But it's going to be based on, you know, votes, so you're going to want to encourage your friends to go to our Facebook fan page and stuff like that. But just start thinking about funny scenarios that you can do with a hammer, an actual hammer, or a photoshopping of a hammer. And uh, nothing lewd, please, or we won't approve it. We reserve all rights to accept or deny any entries. <laughs> do I miss the old MTV, like the days when we would play music? Oh, Jim and her full. You know, when I worked there, it was really, really fun. There's nothing like being, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge music fan. So to be in an environment where bands were coming through all the time and you got to meet new bands and, you know, constantly got, you know, you were, to be on the mailing list from record companies where everything just gets sent to you. I mean, I know the whole paradigm has shifted and it's all digital and download, whatever, yada, yada, yada. But at the time, they would still send you CDs. And so you just got everything. So you could hear everything. And, you know, I used to go to CBGB's all the time. I, you know, I lived in New York. I was out at the, you know, at these clubs. I would see these incredible shows of bands, you know, just on the rise. And it really was great. And I do miss the days of being able to tune MTV and see a video and maybe, you know, see something cool or hear, hear new music that I liked. I definitely do miss that. And I have to say, you know, I was, it was a guilty pleasure of mine watching Jersey Shore. But I think I finally burnt out. I have a bunch of it on my DVR and I haven't finished watching it. And, I got to like I got through the Italy thing. I think I might be done. So somebody, if you have a reason why I should keep watching it, let me know. But I I think I've uh, I've I've reached <laughs> reached the limit. I heard though, didn't uh, the situation in a rehab or something recently? Didn't see that coming. Uh, okay, let's see. Who will beat Owens Jones? O D James too. I think Rashad could. I think Rashad could. And here's the interesting thing about John is he is so he's so good he's so good. But if you'll notice, and I don't think I'm wrong in this, every fight he subsequently gets taken deeper and deeper and deeper. I think at the beginning, John was so fast and furious and unorthodox and you know lanky and this and that 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 he was just this enigma that people couldn't figure out. So he just jammed people right away and, and finished them. Rampage took him deep, you know. I think the the longer John fights, 
and not that it's going to be easier to beat him because obviously he's training and getting better and better. But the longer he fights, the more footage there is on him for you to watch him and try to figure out the puzzle. I'm not a mathematician uh, or a statistician or whatever. I don't know how you could plot the arc of John's improvement versus other people's improvement in understanding him, but I think the day will certainly come um, when he is beaten. I mean, my goodness, he is such a good fighter. But I, but I believe it's it's possible. And listen, I mean, we know this. Anybody can get caught. I mean, the thing is, is with that reach, you know, you have to play the game the right way. But who's to say somebody can't sneak inside, jam an uppercut? wobble him a little. I mean, you could tell in the fight with Rampage, Rampage did hurt him, and that's what John even said in the post fight. He's like, look, I, I got tagged, and I didn't want any more of that. You know, I mean, that's the whole question is, is his chin solid? Because it hasn't been tested that much. I think he's going to be beatable. I, in certain ways, believe Rashad has a better chance than Hendo. I mean, Hendo is so good, though, too, with his wrestling, but... um. And maybe I'm giving that edge to Rashad over Hindu in the beatable in the beatability because of the mental element of how badly Rashad wants it. Um, whereas with Dan, I think it would be a great win for him, and it would be a title. Obviously, with Rashad, it means so much more. And I know he works with Al Fuentes; he's got a mental coach, so I don't think he's going to psych himself out. So I I think that mental edge and that desire and that um, that burning need to avenge everything. Um, I think that gives Rashad a little bit of a chance. I'm going to be in Atlanta, so we'll be covering that fight and we'll see. I really honestly don't go. I'm not, I'm not picking a winner, but I'm just saying that could be a, quite a competitive fight. Uh, and again, don't get me wrong, John Jones is ridiculously good. Uh, ooh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Da, 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 da. Earl from Brooklyn, what, what? Okay. How good is Junior Cheesecake? <laughs> I gave up dairy like a year and a half ago or whatever, but Junior Cheesecake is the bomb. And um, do people even say the bomb anymore? Probably not. Uh, I used to live in New York. I lived in New York for seven years in Manhattan, but uh, I used to go out to Brooklyn and stuff. And I think I had my first White Castle burger out in Brooklyn, and I'd get my, you know, like bulletproof Chinese food out there with my friends and stuff like that. Brooklyn is hot. Good music, good scene. What, McDeal, answer my question. I thought I did answer your question, McDeal. Did you write another one? I don't know. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, see, this is the thing, folks. Like I said, this is all kind of new, and so the comments, I can't tell what's the most recent and what's not, because it seems like um, some things are coming through. Karen, why aren't you with Showbox anymore from Big Juge 25 Okay, here's the thing. To clarify, I never worked for Showbox. I worked for Showtime Championship Boxing, and maybe that's what you mean just as an abbreviation. Showbox was kind of like the Strike Force Challengers to the Strike Force show, kind of the um, up and comer show. But I always worked on Showtime Championship Boxing, and I worked there for three and a half years until I didn't. And to be completely honest with you, they never actually gave me a reason. Um, so, whatever, whatever. But anyway, I'm covering MMA now, but I am still a big boxing fan as well. And we actually have an interview with Michael Katsidis coming up. We shot it the other day at Justin Fortune's gym. Uh, all you Australians, I was just talking about that. But uh, Katsidis is another um, Aussie, and he's fighting on April 13th on ESPN. So we talked to him the other day, uh, and we'll be posting that soon as well. So definitely supporting the boxing still, for sure. I do think Marquez kind of beat Pacquiao last time, but that's just me. I like the Marquez brothers, though. I covered three out of the four of the, um, the Vasquez-Marquez fights, which were unbelievable. I mean, really, literally, when it, when, you know, at the end of the day in my, in my fight career, when people ask, oh, you know, people do ask me, oh, what's the greatest fight you've ever seen, and yada, yada, yada. I know that's boxing, and if they're just talking about MMA, I would have different answers, but the Vasquez-Marquez fights were unbelievable. So much fun, and so emotional, and just, I mean, just amazing. Just amazing. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, love what you do, love your interviews, Aloha from Hawaii. Thank you, Cynthia. Hawaii is beautiful. I've been there twice. Went to Kauai once with a friend of mine, and then Wade and I went to Maui and Oahu for our honeymoon. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. So let's see, let's see. Um, gosh, yeah, see, it's like they're repeating on some of these comments. So do I watch TV and what? 
Roller uh, Jocko, Roller, sorry if I'm butchering that. <laughs> yeah. Do do I watch TV? I do. I watch stuff off the DVR now. Um, the shows we're watching recently, we were, we were watching Californication before <laughs> I did this. Yeah, that show, it, it's every week I watch it and I'm like, this show just keeps getting worse and worse. And yet I'm still watching it. I feel like it was kind of like how I was with The Lost. Like I committed so much time and I know it's almost done. I can't stop. I got to keep watching. I don't know if I even enjoy I mean, I kind of enjoy it. Now I feel like an addict. Now I feel like Hank Moody. Now I'm doing it just because that's what I always do. Um, but right now, currently, uh, I'm enjoying House of Lies. Um, and um, I love, <laughs> I love, I love me some Eastbound and Down. Kenny Powers. Kenny Powers is, to me, the funniest, the, the funniest character on TV right now. He's genius. And again, maybe that's because I'm a big sports fan. But Eastbound and Down, to me, funniest show going. The Ricky Gervais show, Life's Too Short, is killing me. Killing me. I love Ricky Gervais. Always have. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, you got to look it up. It's about a little person, and it's funny. It's like a kind of reality hybrid scripted thing and some of the scenarios are so wrong it's that really weird and comfortable uncomfortable comedy that um that really really cracks me up uh mainstream tv wise otherwise what am i what am i i mean obviously we watch the ultimate fighter and mm, i'm trying to think what else i watch lately everything's kind of the, like oh oh <gasps> mad men is coming back on sunday i love mad men i'm really excited for that um you know, that's that's it. I, I don't watch a ton of TV. We just kind of watch it off the DVR. I don't have a lot of time for TV. I like TV, but I don't have a ton of time for it. Um, how's Dana White in person? Soprano, 1972. Dana is cool. Let me tell you, he's great. I have a lot of fun with him. He's always very cool to us. You know, whether or not, you know, people's, oh, Dana's lying and this and that. Look, he's, 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 He's running the UFCs. He's he's keeping people interested. He's entertaining us. I have no complaints about the guy. He's been great to me. I have a lot of fun with him. We have fun interviews. He's always been super cool. So uh, so yeah, that's my answer. That is definitely my answer. I like him. Um, ooh, Henderson Edgar rematch. I gotta go Hendo all day. I like Frankie. Frankie's talented. I prefer Hendo though. I I. Uh, I thought he won the last one. I'm, I'm a Henderson fan. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Did I ever watch any Pride fights live? No. Unfortunately, I didn't. Wait, you went to you went to Vegas and saw some with Rob, uh, no? I went to K1. He went to K1. He went to K1. No. Unfortunately, never got to see any Pride live. That would have been awesome. Mm, let's see. Da, 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 da. In, let's see. Can you give me some love to your Twitter? Oh, oh, the Twitter people are, are okay, There's cool. A oh, people are on their way. <laughs> Will Baroni is killing me. Uh, okay, how about, oh, Machida versus Musasi. <gasps> Wild card king. Okay, yeah, that would be too, I mean, I know I'm a girl and I'm, you know, I mean, I'm a professional, but that's a little too much hotness in one cage for me right there, putting Machida and Musa. Everybody knows. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, it happens even when Rampage isn't here. Um, Everybody knows I like Gagard Musasi. I think he's cute. Okay, yeah, let's see. Oh, Joe Cool, 567, says I'm the, the sexiest MMA reporter of all time. Thank you, Joe Cool. And that is a very cool avatar you have. Um, I should answer Twitter questions, DCAM. Answer Twitter questions in a vlog, upload it. You know, we're working on it, baby. That's why we started this. And yes, UFC Pempat, ask some questions. Go for it. Um, I'm trying to, I need, I, we need a, we need an assistant. We need, a, and somebody just texted me too. Who texted me? Steven. Steven Morocco is tapping out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Next time he's going to come, come by and play bass. If you guys don't know that Steven is a, uh, bye Steven. <laughs> Have some live music. I'm still talking because I, I'm a chatty girl. But no, Steven is, um, not only is he a writer for MMA Junkie and arguably the best writer for MMA Junkie, but, uh, he's also a bass player. So maybe one day we'll have him over here playing some music live for us. That would be very fun. Good night, Stephen. Sleep tight. Are you alone? I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell stories out of school, but dude's a player. 
Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm, which fighter was the most awkward during an interview, and which fighter did you have an instant chemistry with? The most awkward, one of the, one of the most awkward, I gotta say, is Jacob Volkman. Um, only because he didn't, like, look, look at me. It was kind of weird. He, he sort of looked at me, um, and it was after he won his fight. We were happy for him. Um, and it was after he told that, that Obama joke and stuff. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he was just in a weird mood that night or whatever, but he, he wasn't, he wasn't weird or anything. He just, I don't know if you look at that video. I don't know if he actually looked me in the eye that much. So, um, that, that, I'm trying to think. That might be that might be one of the more awkward ones, but I, he's a very nice guy, so I, I have no issues with him. It was it wasn't me doing that, and the instant uh, chemistry. I know everybody's going to assume rampage, but it's actually not. If you look at it, well, it, well, it was going well until I asked him about losing, <laughs> and he walked out of the interview, and I actually had to spend some time uh, over the course of a couple events when I saw him, you know, off camera or whatever. Uh, talking to him and explaining myself to him or whatever. Now, obviously, we're cool. But instant rapport, uh, instant chemistry, I'm going to bring it back. Gagard, Musasi, and I get along very well right away. I got along well with Josh Barnett right away. I got along well with, um, uh, 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 well, you know, Munoz. yeah, Mark Munoz is great. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a friendly girl. I, I find that it's easier. I get along with people. Uh, generally pretty well. You know who's, you know who I got along with really well? It's like Randy Couture, and I mean, I don't know, I, I can't complain about anybody. I'm generally, uh, get along okay. And since, you know, it's funny, since, since learning some Portuguese, um, Brazilian fighters, even if I haven't met them before, there's, um, there's this kind of baseline familiarity, and, uh, so that's been actually really great. I, I, I really appreciate the support I get from the um, Brazilian yeah, fighters. A lot of Twitter from okay, oh they're, wow. They're up. All right, the tweeter the tweeter the tweeter yeah. tweeter people are up. Okay. Twitter. Okay, Mohali thirteen says, I like your hair straight. I don't like your hair curly. Please keep it straight. Mohali, I'm sorry for disappointing you right now. What does your hair look like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how I like your hair. Um, you know what the truth of it is, is I like it both ways, but my hair is just naturally curly and I do straighten it sometimes, unless I do sometimes I don't. Yeah. Let's see. Ooh, how do I think Oliaris would do against Anderson? I think the reach advantage of Anderson would eliminate uh, Husamar's, um abilities to, well, he could shoot and take him down. I don't know. I think, I think Anderson's reach advantage would, uh, would neutralize that. Um, da, 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 da. please give Boner fights a shout out. That's going to get used against me. <laughs> Someone's going to make <laughs> yeah, right. him get Boner fights, Boner fights. Okay. You just did it. I know, I did. I totally, <laughs> totally did. Uh, UFC Pimp Pat, does my husband get mad when Rampage falls off that stuff? And he was, no. He never crosses the line. It is a joke. We talk about everything we're going to do before we even roll cameras. It's a goof. It's for entertainment. Like, we all, you know, like, off camera, we all three of us are busting up and laughing and goofing around. It's, it's, it's funny. You don't think we need to be entertained, too? It's, I've smacked him in the balls. Oh, yeah, he did. There's a clip. It's the one after, after the fight in Denver. Wade's like, hey, Paige, Paige, come here for a second. Ba-bam! And, like, slaps him and stuff. It's very funny. Um, it's fun. Listen, and then people are like... Ooh, that guy's a cuckold. He should, what's he, he should, shouldn't let Rampage disrespect. What are you going to do? You're going to throw the camera down on the ground. That's it, Rampage. That's enough. Get off my woman. What are you honestly going to well, do? if he touched you, well, I would. No, listen, here's the thing. If he touched me, I would kick his ass. I don't, I mean, that's, that's how it goes. So I would punch him. He knows that. Nah. It's not. No, I'm saying it's, that enough with it. I know. It's just, it's, well, that's not a hater. It's we, just no, a question. No, so we have a good time. It's just a question. He's a cool guy. JDS or Overeem? Tough call. Actually, you know, we put up this um, clip with Kenny Johnson, the actor from The Shield and Sons of Anarchy. We have this little clip that we just put up. It's like a teaser of him teaching me to arm wrestle. But in the next clip that we put up with him, he's a big MMA fan, so we talk about MMA and fighting else. And he talks about how he bet his friends that Overeem was going to win. Uh, and so we go on this whole conversation about JDS and Overeem. I think that's going to be a competitive fight. I can't pick, I mean, I just can't pick, I just can't pick that right now. going to be a very good fight, though. JDS is for real, though. He is for real. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, let's see. Okay, see some of these? Yeah, we've seen. How do I feel about an all heavyweight main card? Not that good. Um, I gotta be honest with you, uh, Darren Love, because I like the, um, I appreciate the lighter weights. I like how they are more active. I like how they, they just stay busier. I think the fights a lot of time can be more exciting. So I like to mix it up a little bit. Um, I think an all heavyweight card in one way might be a way to get some boxing fans into MMA because... Those guys are maybe bigger and they're more sluggers. But um, for me as an MMA fan, I like seeing the lighter weight classes in there too because I think they do a lot of work and um, and they put on a good show. So let's see, let's see, let's see. What's my favorite movie of all time? Oh, it's the same dude who hates my hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how much did he promote? You know, Mohali, you're starting to be mean. Matt Hamill didn't pay us anything. We're friends with the people who made the movie and we wanted to help them out. And we're friends with Matt. Why are you mad? Oh my goodness, Mohali is mad. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. What's your favorite movie? I know, my favorite movie. That's a good question. I, I don't have one. I'll name you a few of my favorite movies of all time. Goodfellas, Star Wars, The Big Blue. Diner. No, no, yeah, Diner, Thelma and Louise, uh, The Professional, uh... Those are some of my top. Those are, oh, and oh, Close Encounters. Genius. Okay, let's see if we have some more. Um, my favorite comic. You know, I don't read a lot of comics. I'm sorry. I don't, I can't, I'm not that familiar. I don't. Oh, no. What? Chuck Norris wins. Oh, no. Do I like The Walking Dead? No. You know what? I watched it the other day and I fell oh, asleep. Great show. Wade's into Love it. Love that show. Wade's into it. Not S me. Sad they had the finale. I want more. Have to wait until fall. I shoot zombies when we play, uh, what do you call it, Black Ops? Otherwise, I didn't care. Honestly, I didn't care. I'm sorry, I tried. Because everyone's oh, it shows the bomb, you gotta check it out. That's awesome. Not good. Um, I didn't care. So am I a, no, we are not swingers. Hell Kid Rock is 19. We've been married for 10 years. It's been together even longer than that. Hell no. The only swinging we do is on the play set in the backyard with our kid. <laughs> <laughs> um... Um, do I think Nick's ADD is a lame reason for smoking weed? No. I think if it makes him feel better, uh, I think that's great. I have other friends that are on medical marijuana. I have no problem with medical marijuana for people who need it legitimately. I think if that helps Nick live his life, good for him. You know, I, I think Nick is terrific. I think he's an awesome fighter. So uh, I'm I'm not mad at him. If he's got a legitimate license and a, and a doctor's prescription, then I'm not the one to tell him he can't do it. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, let's see. <laughs> answer the YouTube people. Don't answer the Twitter people. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's see. Oh, somebody had a question. Wade, you rock. The Walking Dead is awesome. <laughs> SS <laughs> Racer. Oh, my favorite Chuck Norris joke. I bought my father-in-law that Chuck Norris, uh, that book. Isms. Yeah, that, oh, man, what was there? Oh, God, there are so many good ones. I can't, I can't even remember. There was some, um, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I just saw some funny ones the other day. I gotta, I gotta look, I gotta look them up. But those are very funny, those Chuck Norris jokes. Um, my favorite Chuck Norris joke, really, though, was that wig. That's hilarious. <laughs> Am I an insomniac? No, generally I'm not. But uh, once I get started talking on this, I can't stop. Like I just was joking before, this is going to become my confessional. You guys are going to be like, for crying out loud, Karen. But we do stay up late. Go away. But yeah, we always stay up late. Do I have a boyfriend? No, no, Darb. 12-12, I have a husband. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that my real hair? Yes, it is. No, Darb. 12-12, this is my real hair. I do get some highlights, I'm not going to lie. Because otherwise my hair is very dark and uh, it looks kind of like one solid mass on camera. So I get some highlights. This is absolutely 100% my real hair. And when it's straight, that's just the length of the curls straightened out. It's real. It's all real. <laughs> George, George, George Hart says, put them on the glass. That's not going to happen. But that's very funny. That is very funny. Um, that's very funny. <laughs> Oh my goodness. 
Oh my goodness. Can I interview Crow Cop? I wish Legolas 7201. That would be cool, huh? My buddy Ray just fought him um, uh, not too long ago over there on the 10th in, in Croatia and he lost that fight. But, you know, I've never got, you know, Crow Cop, I got to tell you, is actually quite elusive because when we were in Vegas when he was fighting Roy, um, I tried, believe me, I tried, and like after the press conferences, you go run it up there, and Crow Cop like sneaks out, and uh, I was even, you know, by the um, the training rooms and stuff, working one night, and he comes by, and I'm talking to him about, you know, Pat Barry, and yada, 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 but he, he no likey the interview, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's difficult, I've tried, believe me, I have tried. Although Moro has the best role. Mor well, yeah, if you guys haven't seen Moro get punked by Crow Cop, do yourself a favor after we're done here and do it. You will pee laughing. It is so genius. I love Moro. You know, we used to work together and uh, and that guy cracks me up. But the, where he gets punked by Crow Cop is genius. Genius, genius, genius. Um, and I loved it. Somebody just asked me what I think of Crow Cop and the Pat Berry singing thing. thought it was hilarious. And I tell you what, I can't, well, we can't share it with you, but I've seen some uh, Czech Congo. <laughs> <laughs> Czech Congo videos of him singing some hilarious songs. Actually, even better, but um, those are private videos, so I don't think we're allowed to show you that. Uh, am I going to Brazil for UFC 147? I want to. I really want to. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Favorite chail line. The favorite. It has to be the thing. I left office, like any good politician, in handcuffs. <laughs> that was the best. Chail is very funny. Um... Chael looks a lot like Wade, actually. We, people have said that. Here's another backstory that you guys uh, maybe don't know. Leoto Machida's camp, they all call Wade Chael. And so, because they think they kind of look alike. And when actually, when we oh, saw like. Chael um, in... I don't think I look like Chael. A little bit. Not, 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 not too much. Sometimes. It, it depends. But uh, when... When we were in Philly for uh, for UFC 133, you know, we were, we were talking to Chael. We actually took a picture with Wade and Chael, and they actually did kind of look alike. But but Leona's camp likes to call Wade Chael, and so when we were up in Toronto for 129, you're like walking through the lobby of the hotel, and you're Chael, Chael, with this great Brazilian accent. You turn around, it's Leona and his guys just cracking up. It's very funny. It's very funny. Um, cutest fighter? I can't answer that. I'm married. <laughs> but let me tell you, there are a couple. I can't say anything, though. No, I can't name any names. Um, let's see. Let's see. You're welcome. I like interacting with you guys. This is fun. Um, you could say Ronda Rousey. What about Ronda? Cutest fighter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Wade says Ronda's the cutest fighter. Uh, Karen, we need a Phil Baroni interview. Damn straight. You know, God, I don't even know if I ever did speak to him way back when. Phil, if you're, if you're still watching, I'll tweet you later. We do need to have an interview because I... Love me some Phil Baroni. Come on, come on, come on. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, okay, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, okay, how about, yeah, we'll do this to 1.30. Because at some point, we somebody said, oh my God, he does look like, just like jail. Wow, my husband is white. Yes, F9 hunter. <laughs> Why is that so weird? I... I am an equal, well, I'm not an equal opportunity dater anymore because I'm married, but at the time, I, you know, I, I date all kinds of people. I wasn't only dating one kind. I'm a mix of stuff myself, so I'm not uh, prejudiced toward one group or another. So, yes, my husband is white. He's actually <laughs> the white guy. Like, if you ever look up, like, you know, white guy, it's going to have his picture there. <laughs> like, yeah, he doesn't dance. What else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he <laughs> yeah, he's a meat and potatoes guy, and he actually, uh, yeah, it's funny, he's a white guy, but yes, I am married to a white guy. What did I think of the Strike Force Misha Tate versus Ronda Rousey event, Pegs and MMA? I thought that was good. I thought that that fight was interesting. I thought, oh my God, I just wish Ronda, uh, I mean, uh, Misha had tapped. That, that kind of freaked me out. Um, I just, I hope she's, you know, I want her arm to be okay, and I know there was probably more than, you know, just losing the fight. A lot of pride and a lot of stuff on the line there, but um, I, I, I was freaking out. Watching Did you see the cover of Black Belt Magazine? Yes, Ronda's on the cover of Black Belt Magazine. That's pretty, right. Pretty good for the sport. Yes, what's my favorite video game? I gotta go with Centipede. And I know it's old-fashioned, but I'm very, very good at it, and uh, I can't really keep up with all these other new games. I'm like a button masher, so I'm not really good at all this other stuff. Um, uh, I'm getting pretty good at Little Big Planet. Um, which is not that badass, 
I play some black ops, but um, I, you know, I always like centipede. Sorry, uh, my daughter is five, five and five and change. She's very sweet. Um, can't wait for the fights in Calgary. Am I going to be there? Yes, Hell Black yeah. X Men. Yes, I am. We're going to be there. Some of our best buddies moved back to, to Canada recently, and um, actually, we were just visiting them the other day. They were down here. We are going to be all over Calgary, and I know it's right after Stampede, and so we might actually go early and try to hang out and do a little bit at Stampede, too. It's going to be crazy. I've never been up to Calgary. Really looking forward to it. Can't wait. Can't wait. Um, who's from Vermont? Okay, hey, it's, it's, it's dollar sign 30 here in Vermont. SS Razor 16. Okay, it's Vermont. I'm still, oh, yeah, oh, it's 3.30. That's a 3.30. Yeah. Hey, I'm from Massachusetts, Vermont. You guys. Four thirty. I know I gave up. Yeah, four because it's right. I gave up dairy, but my God, the cheese in Vermont is amazing. Um, let's see. Uh, let da, 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 da. Why did I do my first test in the middle of the night? Hey, it's nine a.m. somewhere, isn't it? Um, actually, we were just busy earlier and and needed to uh, needed just wanted to test this out. Okay. Um, Floyer Pacquiao. Floyd. Um, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, how tall am I? Baznaya. I look taller, I look tall near the fighters. I am 5'8". So I am actually, uh, tall near a lot of the fighters. That's why I like, I like interviewing John Jones. <laughs> I like interviewing Travis Brown and Stefan Struve and stuff, because those guys are big. But, uh, yeah, I'm 5'8", so, you know, basically, a lot of the, uh, lightweights, I'm equal to or taller than... Uh, but anybody, you know, the, the feathers, the bantams, the flies, all that stuff, yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm taller than they are. And, you know, it can make a girl a little self-conscious sometimes, but, but it's okay. And sometimes I am wearing heels, but, um, but nothing too crazy. But, yes, I'm 5'8". And I weigh 110 pounds. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, somebody just said something. They were going to send me some, some syrup. You're from Vermont. Oh, Oh, I love them. Oh, it's so good. Cabot. Oh, don't. I can't even love the cheese. Where's don't Parker's? Do it. Is that? Parker's is in New Hampshire. Parker's uh, is uh, in New Hampshire. It's amazing. Great, great, uh, great, great place. Um, okay, let's see, let's see. Um, um, am I going to help promote getting MMA in New York? If I can, I will. I love it. I love it. I love New York. You know, I lived there for seven years. They should have it. Uh, and my friend to Joe Rogan, we're friendly, uh, we don't hang out, uh, cowboy tap out 000, I think he's awesome, I'm a big Joe Rogan fan, I think he's, I think he's funny as hell, and, uh, I would, I would like to be friends with Joe, I'm gonna work on that, but we are friendly, certainly, have I been to Stockton, yes I have, well, yes, okay, cause I did, um, one of the CBS fights, uh, it was one of Nick's fights, the Saturday Night Fights, uh, was in Stockton, so I was there, and recently I was driving through Stockton when I went up to visit some friends in Elk Grove, and I actually called Nick because I wanted to go and hang out and film some stuff, but it was before the Condit fight, and they were kind of maintaining radio silence, so we weren't able to do it, but, uh, but, but yes, I have been to Stockton. Okay, so we're going to stop in only a couple minutes, right, because it's almost one thirty. what time it is here. It's one. It's almost one thirty. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. Still, am I still into GSP Rush Fit, Dove and Dove? I do do it. You know, it's funny. I almost did it today, but I uh, I I didn't get to do it. I had to take my daughter to the doctor, or whatever. So I didn't get to do it. It's a good workout, though. How much do I bench press? I don't know, like thirty pounds. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't bench a lot. Um, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. You were saying to do live interviews. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, here's the thing, folks. Yeah, we should ask you this. We, you know, we want to do a lot of live stuff here, uh, and obviously not necessarily in the middle of the night. So, if you could write me, even if now, if we wrap this up, but, you know, um, shoot a, a channel comment or tweet me at, you know, at Karen Bryan or at MMA Heat and let us know what kind of stuff you'd like to see live. Because sometimes we'll probably have, you know, live interviews. Sometimes we'll do stuff live from a gym. Sometimes, like I said, we'll do kind of a Mystery Science Theater 3000 thing, maybe when we're watching fights. But I'd love to know what you guys uh, want to see. And also what, you know, what fighters you guys like the most. I know a lot of, I get a lot of requests for, you know, talk to Chael more or, you know, try to talk to, you know, Shogun or whatever. And some of these guys we can do. Sometimes it's just a question of proximity and, and you know being around them or whatever and uh, and getting it. But 
I always want to know who you guys like the most. I mean, I'm not sure who your favorite guys are for us to talk to. So, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Cormier or Barnett? That's interesting. A lot of times it looks like it's going to be Barnett right away, but Daniel's wrestling is so good. But Josh is so big and strong. Um, I might have to go. I might have to go Josh on that. I don't know. Um, give me a shout out. I just subscribed. My name is Anton. <laughs> Wacko three eighty. What's up? Um, um, watch old Pride fights and Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Then maybe we could do that. That's actually a pretty good idea. Um, okay, but yeah, we are gonna wrap this up soon. But I will do. You know what I'll do? I'll do. I'll give you guys better notice too when we're gonna do this because um, this was kind of a last minute thing. At some point, maybe we'll do a scheduled thing like a couple times a week at you know ten o'clock Pacific time or something. Although they went a little late for the East Coast, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's a learning process. But um, but thank you. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Go to bed. Good night, everybody. Let's see. Um, oh, hello, Sweden. Oh, it's Waco from Sweden. We'll be there in a couple weeks. Can't wait. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Mm. <laughs> Wade can eat the cheese. I can have the syrup. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's nice. That's not, how much do I deadlift now? I don't. I don't know. Can I? Can I beat up Brock Lesnar? No. Um, do I own any pets? We have a dog. Um, I we used to have another dog, but he passed away. But uh, that's only. Oh, and we have some fish. You know, my daughter has some fish. Let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. How do I keep my inter questions interesting so fighters don't get bored repeating themselves? Bet on bent. Good question. Um, you know, obviously a lot of time we have to cover the same bases as other reporters and talk about the same things. I just kind of like to come in it at a different angle sometimes or even just with a different tone. You know, if you've noticed anything about our interviews, we try to keep them a little bit more lighthearted and even though I still may be asking a serious question about a fight, a win, a loss, um, try to try to have a little bit more levity in it and try to mix it up a little bit, not be so deadpan and you know, boring with the questions. I don't know. I just really, I guess part of it too is that I'm a fan. And so I kind of let the fan part of it come out in me too. Um, and, and try to, you know, celebrate what they just did in the cage and, and help them tell their story really is what it is. So I just, I guess, try to ask the question in a way that will help them tell their own story. So do I like rugby? I do. I do. I had a, um, uh, 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 a friend that played rugby back in college and that's how I learned about scrums and taping down ears and all that good stuff. I do like rugby. Am I a big fan of football? Yes, we covered that before. I'm a huge football fan. Okay. Well, I think we can... Um, do I think... Japan... Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Oshikawa Jesus is in Japan. I live near Nagoya. Do you think about Tough Brazil and UFC 147 in soccer stadium? I guess, what do I think of that? Um... I think that's cool, and you know, in fact, um, I'm looking forward to watching some of the Tough Brazil. One of the guys that you know, they just announced the other day um, who the matchups were for the elimination fights, and we know one of the guys in it, uh, Caesar Mutanchi, who is Vitor Belfort's protege, and we actually have an interview with Vitor. I mean, uh, well, lots of with Vitor, but also with Caesar on our channel. If you want to see this guy before before you see him fight, he's a middleweight. Um, he also was responsible for training Randy Couture for his fight with Leoto and stuff, and he, you know, really. Nice guy, young fighter, up and coming fighter. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing. I guess I can gonna be able to watch it on streaming. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, you need to know him as Capoeira. Yeah, he's a, a genius Capoeira guy, and so he's he's changing that into into MMA and transitioning. So he's got these ridiculous kicks, and he's very agile and fluid, and it's it's really cool. And he's tall and stuff, so it's it's kind of fun to watch him. But um, I think it's gonna be interesting to have that in a big soccer stadium. I mean, you know, like I said, I just hope I can go. That fight's gonna be incredible. I think, yes, Chael is going to feel the pressure of, of uh, fighting Anderson there. But, you know, like some people were saying, you know, with um, Anderson having the Praetorian support um, and uh, for, that, for, the, for the soccer team, it's Praetorian, I think, or whatever. The, the team, but but the, the rival soccer team, I guess people were saying that the rival soccer team may get behind Chael, so you never know. He may have more support there than, uh, than we realize. So. Okay, I guess we're going to wrap this up. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. No, we're gonna, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get going. It's time for bed. Okay. Come on. <laughs> do I watch hockey? I do. 
sometimes I'm a I'm a I'm a Bruins fan. I'm a girl. I'm a I'm a Bruins girl. But uh, hockey's fun. Live, hockey's awesome. Um, all right. I think that's it. So we'll like I said, we we will uh, we will um, do some more of these. I'm just laughing at some of these comments. Don Fry and, and me is going to be pretty entertaining. Zero nine one hero. Yes. For those who don't know, I'll be working with Don Fry next weekend on the Worldwide MMA Show. Me, Don Fry, and Ron Kruk and. We shot some stuff with Don the other day. The guy is, is, is he's nuts. <laughs> he's totally nuts. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so awesome. Well, guys, thank you for watching. And uh, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a little bit more heads up uh, next time. And, uh, and, but I do appreciate your feedback and, and all your support. And I just trust me, April is going to be ridiculous. We're going to have so much good stuff for you guys. So just please stay tuned.